Welcome everybody to The Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson, and this is Aromatically Speaking, <clears throat> my secondary YouTube channel and uh, the future home to all of my candle content, candle streams, candle evaluations. You got the deal, right? The memo, so to speak. Uh, today we are uh, having a fun special giveaway uh, in courtesy, courtesy, Curtis, not in courtesy, but courtesy of Village Candle. Now, I've not talked about Village Candle a lot, but when I have, I, uh, I think I've made myself clear that I think that Village Candle has really uh, taken large steps, in my opinion, to renew the brand, reboot the, the, the images, the, the look, the aesthetics of their candles, but most importantly, uh, the quality of their candles. I've always liked Village, let's be clear, but you know, whether it be Halloween of last year, their Halloween collection, phenomenal, uh, or the, the, their fantasy collection, which some are still available on their website. Uh, th that collection completely blew me away and how they promoted it using uh, YouTube and Instagram influencers. I think they really are trying to reach out to a younger demographic while still holding on to th the folks who've always loved and burned village candles. We are going live today. We are going to be having a giveaway. Uh, Village Candles sent me four candles, 22 ounce paraffin jars, apothecary jars. And uh, at the conclusion of the video, we're gonna be having Q&A. And if you participated in the q and I'm gonna pick somebody at random. And I'm gonna send you a jar. I'd say on me, but it's really on Village uh, Candle. Uh, I, I reached out to them and I said, look, we all need more candle content right now. Is there anything you can do? And they're like, yes, we'll send you some candles. Beautiful. So in return, I wanna share the love and give uh, these candles away, uh, a giveaway today, but other, we're gonna be having giveaways hopefully every Sunday. They won't always be a full jar. So today's kind of special. And if you haven't participated and you wanna win one of these jars, I'm gonna give you a choice of any of the ones they sent me. Make sure you swing over to the Candle Enthusiast Facebook group and re request to join. This is a friendly community that I talk about uh, just about every t chance I get. It's, a, it's a, a group of folks where we talk about, of course, candles and aromatics, our passion for it, but also we talk about other things that we enjoy. We all seem to be hobbyists of some sort. So go over there. I post every Sunday uh, a thumbnail of the future video that will be going live uh, usually in the afternoon and I ask for a question and that's, you know, if you leave that question that's how you can participate to win. But let's not waste any more time, shall we? I got you guys pulled up so let's uh, check in with you guys if you want to join the live chat completely up to you it's always a fun experience it's a good way to uh, you know throw me a question but also talk amongst yourselves let me grab this box oh yeah this thing literally came in two days after they sent it. I guess it didn't travel very far. Village Candle is out of Maine, but I've had so many other products that I've been waiting weeks for, and I want to welcome everybody joining in. All right. Let's just, let me do a few things here. Are we burning Village Candles? Has, have you, uh, can you find them locally? Do you order them online? Did somebody uh, reach out to you, inspire you to burn village candles? All right, let's do the 
is perfect. I am all set here. A, a, a Nicole, if you can do me a favor, uh, I'm not asking you to hang around for a while, but if you are around and the video starts lagging, you can do this too, everybody. Just in caps, put lag in the comment section. But Nicole, you can send me a direct message if you want. She's one of our moderators for the Facebook uh, candle enthusiast group. Let's get this started. All right, taking enough time here, ain't I? All right, so we can see this. I wanna make sure, since this is an unboxing, that you folks can see how uh, your candles will arrive in the mail. There's nothing worse than receiving a candle smashed, broken. You know, I find it's worse when it's not even that bad of a break, just a small crack, because it's almost okay, but it's not. Uh-oh, we got swag. Uh-oh. Hello. Way to glow. Village candle. Artfully crafted in America just for you. Well, you can never have too many totes. Thank you very much for that. Village candle, that was very kind. I got a catalog. Uh, this is usually the deal. Uh, there you can see that uh, go in the right direction. Uh, fantasy collection I was just talking about. It's a pretty hefty catalog that they always send. And check this out. Love it. No broken glass, folks. No broken glass. guys down here Ooh, and there is I was gonna say a mystery votive it's not a mystery I just didn't see the label um, black bamboo a little black bamboo votive all right all right we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit oh, oh come on Come on, look, look at the shimmer. Look at the radiant brilliance, the luster of it all, the colors of the aluminum lids. I love it. We're gonna be talking about these. I might as well introduce them now. We have French macaroon. And if you're participating in the giveaway, uh, you can make your choices now. Salted. Caramel Latte, limited edition. I know that one is new, and so is this one. Forbidden Desires. Forbidden Desires, man's necktie. That's a little bit promiscuous, wouldn't you say? And, oh yeah. Ginger Pear Fizz. I want to tell you, I was going to make uh, a non-alcoholic beverage on the show for this candle, but I know if, if I did, with the blenders and the ice and all of the paraphernalia, it would take forever. Uh, and I knew you guys were going to want to get to the giveaway. Pug Life says, village candle, warm buttered bread, mind blowing. Uh, I am inhaling already, says Daphne. Easy, easy. We'll get there. We'll get there. Nothing like a package of new candles to make you smile. I've been wondering about the salted caramel latte. So have I, and I'm glad they sent it. We got some drooly faces by Kazra. Kazra, how you doing, bud? Uh, for the pear fizz. Okay, you, you, you've, 
you've I was going to ask someone to pick a first candle, but I think Hazard just did. We have ginger, a pear, fizz. I love ginger. I love pears. Seriously. Like ginger is something I have on a daily basis uh, in the morning. Uh, usually throw it in with some lemon juice, ice, something or other, uh, some kind of fruit and veggies, maybe some greens in the morning uh, right before I have my coffee. And pears is uh, is uh, there's just nothing like a pear. Uh, I'm a little bit biased because I come from apple country, but we have pears here too. So they're de definitely taking a cocktail approach. We have uh, like the slow gin fizz, a play on the slow gin fizz, ice cube on the label, the cocktail, some Bartlett pears, some leafage down there. I think that's just a leaf from the pear tree. And we seem to be on a country kitchen uh, environment on this label. Here we go. Candle number one. I can't do my, it's not, well. okay, okay, all right, so let's, let's start breaking this down. Easiest thing to do is to get the fruit out of the way, and uh, it's uh, definitely a pear uh, tree fruit situation. You know, if you were smelling this blind, you didn't know what this was. If you didn't say pear, you would at least say apple. That is for sure. So you get this pear, uh, pear fruit, pectin, rich, juicy, ripe fruit that is, uh, in my opinion, not only just the fresh fruit, but it's the skin. Because why is a pear so aromatic? Um, Sorry for being so passionate about this, but you got to do this. Next time you eat a pear, even if you don't eat pears, go to the grocery store, buy a pear, skin that pear, or, or just peel off a little piece of uh, the skin and smell the skin, chew on the skin, examine the skin because there's so much fragrance inside of the pear skin. It's where a majority of the fresh fruits aromatic comes from and that goes for apples as well but I mean really uh, you know that 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 fruity musky slightly floral quality of an Anjou pear or a Bartlett pear or even at one of those Asian pears which I don't even know if they're technically pears or not they're the real round bulbous ones they're seriously like candy if you've never had one. But the skins pack the aromatics, and I'm definitely getting the skins. And that creates the authenticity. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm forced to talk a little bit about Apple because I want to put some more images in your mind. Um, you know, uh, think of a really... Uh, juicy sugary apple instead of a, a, a tart apple so not granny smith um uh not uh and and, and not something even like a macintosh macintosh has got a lot of sugar but the honey crisp apple it's got it's got tartness but the tartness is masked masked by the the massive amount of sugar that's in that apple. And a wooden component. This seems to be a very popular trend in an apple candles. Uh, you know, if I always say you know, the little stem, you know, when you eat, eat the fruit, the apple, the pear, all the way down to the core, and you're just left with that stem. Or if you've walked around orchards, pears, apples, and, you know, you, 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 you get those visual cues of 
the apple crates. Of course, all of the pruned apple branches that are all over the orchard floor. Uh, but just being around an environment that has so much wood involved. Um, but because there's a wood component and because this is a slow gin fizz play, a cocktail, you know, there's the concept might be reaching for a bourbon barrel. Now, gin, um, uh, gin is obviously not, well, 99.9% .9 of gin is not aged in any kind of barrels. It's completely neutral uh, 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 liquor spirit, but you know, it does that little bit of a bourbon or oak barrel thing may help with the illusion and may help your mind get to this idea of an adult beverage, an adult cocktail. And I've been calling this Hopefully I've been calling this right. Ginger pear fizz. Yeah, so the play is gin fizz, but this is ginger. Ginger. You guys probably know that. I'm just, my mind's all over the place. So freshly sliced, ooh, this is not pickled ginger. This is not baking spice ginger, like ginger in the powdered form that we put in gingerbread or molasses-based cookies. This is a fresh ginger this is what i taste in the morning you know uh eating ginger straight up is pretty difficult to do even though i like to do it uh but the the juices that exude from that ginger root when you slice it you know it's that fresh really fruity and spicy aroma and i'm getting some green notes too it's not because of the color I smell a little bit of leafage, a little bit of vegetation. Is it all of the associations that's bringing me to that because of everything I mentioned? It's possible. I don't think so. There, uh, maybe I was going too far with the wood, and what I was really smelling was this green component. But you, we have to uh, address the citrus, right? Because you know, just because, say, a company puts pear or apple or, or persimmon or uh, uh, even something crazier like raisins in the description of the candle, uh, you always have to inoculate the mixology with some citrus. The citrus uh, is going to really uh, brighten up the candle. Uh, it's going to create that depth of complexity and it's going to keep it refreshing especially in this case so as a concept as as uh, as a concept and uh, I guess aromatically speaking this is something that definitely I would enjoy I would burn this this is right down my alley there's nothing in here that you know I'm I, I, when I burn candles, I'll be honest, sometimes I play it very safe, you know, uh, I, I don't, you know, if it's something, if, you know, I don't want to, I, I, you know, if it's, if it's, if something's in it that's aggressive, I, I will smell it, I will burn it, but I won't necessarily just burn it on a Saturday night. Uh, I, I want to make sure if I'm committing to a candle on a, like a Saturday or Friday night, that it's something that it's going to be lit all night and that I'm going to enjoy. And this one is showing me no signs of this being something that would aggravate uh, guests, uh, family visiting the house. I just want to, you know, I'm always eager to get a few more things. There's a little bit of, a, I guess, if we, if, I'm always doing candies, a little bit of a sour apple, a green sour apple Jolly Rancher candy. I know I said no Granny Smith but there is that perception of a candified, sugary, um, sour, sour apple candy. So there it is, ginger, pear, fizz. And something I, I, you know, I should have pointed out, that citrus does add to 
um, uh, this effervescence uh, perception. You know, there's some candles that really, you know, sometimes when you smell them, they're like, oh my God, that really smells like pineapple soda. Like I, you can almost feel like the bubble, bubbles tickling your nose. It's not really the case here, but that citrus does give this like a, a, like a lime flavored seltzer quality. Let me show you a close up of this candle and then I'll read the fragrance notes. Uh, here we go. So there it is. I should have pulled this up earlier. Um, beautiful, beautiful looking jars. They, they, they switched to these aluminum lids, not exclusively, I don't think, but m maybe they have, I don't know. Um, and I really, I really enjoy them because it just, again, it separates the look from Yankee Candle. And that picture is mouth-watering, is it not? Let's read the description that Village Candle offers. We believe laughter and joy are infectious and meant to be shared whenever possible. With that, with that as our inspiration, we created a fragrance that captures the bubbly, effervescent quality of spontaneous laughter and love. We mingled energizing ginger, plush pear, and a fizzy, fresh touch of citrus for a fragrance that's a total pop of positivity and delight. Woo! Woo! Um, that is filled with very lovely words uh it's certainly a mouthful to describe the candle but i do like it i like it and i think it touches on a lot of things that i said it's also important that i mentioned that i have not read any material on any of these candles what did i see here that i wanted to repeat um uh, a touch of citrus i don't know there, i thought there was something I wanted to point out again, but as I said, this uh, certainly gives uh, give this my recommendation. If you enjoyed the little breakdown that I shared, uh, just in case we're not sure if we've never burned a village candle before, uh, they these large apothecary jars range in ounces. These are. Uh, I think I listed 22, but these things can be 23, 26 sometimes, 21.25 um, ounces of wax, two wicks. That is going to be the main, main difference in the construction from Village to something like Yankee Candle. Is that something you guys would burn? Is that something that is thirst quenching for you? Um, uh, the lids look not bad, more America chic, like something you'd see at Hobby Lobby. That's a very interesting observation. I like that. I have been burning Kringle Strawberry Lemonade. It's okay, not a top pick, says Pug Life. All right, let's move on to the next candle. All right. Forbidden Desires. I had to. I had to uh, request for this one. Um, just because these these candles that aren't literal, you know, forbidden desires, like that could smell like anything that's a desire of yours that for whatever reason is forbidden. Um, uh, but we do see a man's, well, it, it's just a tie. I, I suppose women can wear ties. Diane Keaton wears men's ties. Let's show you an up close picture. Um, of the jar uh, yeah so okay so we're playing a little bit with I don't think a little bit I think we're playing a lot with uh, 50 shades of gray here 
Uh, they are advertising this as a new candle and it is listed as a limited edition uh, candle as well. Let me look at the bottom of the label. This is also 21.25 ounces and it of course has two wicks with a slate gray uh, paraffin wax. And here's also their promotional photo for that. So not in a, a men's or man's bathroom or bachelor pad. That could be a bachelor pad. Uh, usually I find that these candles don't, no one, no one, no one get angry with me, but I find that these candles, uh, I th you know, Yankee Candle, I think turned, uh, uh coined this phrase, uh, a boyfriend candle, uh, meaning, you know, if you don't have a man around the house here, it's like, you know, a man was in your house and left his, his aroma all over the place. Um, but also I think a lot of young gentlemen gravitate towards concepts like this. I think for two reasons. One, I think they're try, you know, trying to impress the ladies. If they're trying to fill that role of a young professional, uh, and they're trying to take themselves seriously. But also, of course, you know, it just it smells like a man. I think, I think, uh, because if I'm guessing, this is going to be, uh, you know, a perfume store, cologne store, Central. I could be wrong. It could smell like sprinkles. There's only one way to find out. That's actually really nice. Wow. There's a lot of lime. Very limey. Wow. That's okay. So this is a great example. And I am not just, um, what's a good phrase? B buttering Kringle candles, not Kringle, village candles muffin here. Um, buttering someone's muffin. Is that, is that a phrase? Is that a saying? Like you're trying to compliment them? when it's not deserved, like butter, but butter them up, butter their muffin. I don't know. Uh, but seriously, that is something I don't wear cologne. That is something I would wear. And this is definitely not like high school locker room, high school locker room, college locker room, even, you know, the locker rooms at the gym. I never go in those those locker rooms because you know you walk in and you're smelling the combination of the axe body sprays the powders the of course the body odor the sweaty socks but it's just there's that association with uh in more inexpensive men's fragrance you know stuff that we find at grocery stores nothing wrong with that with axe body spray and everything like that but when it's you're bombarded with it it's way too much. Nor is this something of the past, a cologne of the past. You know, this does not smell like dad. This doesn't smell like grandpa. This doesn't smell uh, overly masculine, like what we would assume Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger would wear. I think, yeah, yeah, cigar smoking, three-piece suit. This is a more of a contemporary uh, style uh, fragrance. And there is a lemon in here, without question. If it's not lemon, it's gonna say bergamot because I never go for bergamot. Um, but even if it is bergamot, it's coming through as lemon, or excuse me, lime zest, uh, lavender, lavender. These are the two key ingredients citrus and lavender in contemporary modern day men's cologne at least as of a, a couple of years ago i remember going when i started this channel going to uh you know uh, uh, one of these 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 colognes perfume stores in an outlet during christmas time and they were empty for whatever reason at christmas time so i just had the attendant let me smell everything everything classic fragrances from the 70s the 80s the 90s but then i remember asking her what is like what 
what, how would you describe contemporary men's cologne? Like what is something like a 25 year old guy would come in and, and, and want to smell like? What are some of the ingredients? And I remember her saying, I don't know if she said lavender, but she said floral and, and citrus. And that's just so interesting because that's just not necessarily, well, it, it isn't. I think it's safe to say not something that someone who went to high school in the early 90s or in the 80s would say at all. Maybe not even the, in the early 2000s. Uh, musky, for sure, but um, uh, not powdery, not powdery at all, not powdery. To me, it actually kind of smells balmy balmy uh like um like i just cracked open um a thing of deodorant yeah 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 they, they have to still make those those deodorants where you, you twist the bottom and the the stick doesn't come up but like the jelly the jelly comes up remember those do they still make those there's something about this that has a a, a gel a gel like perception uh, I'm gonna say s sandalwood I would say like a wild sand sandalwood uh, which is the musk to me if it is bergamot that is the musk um, Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. I feel like I could pick this apart more, but I, I'm never really great at picking um, these cologne things. Um, so let's read the description on this one, and then we'll check out the fragrance notes. A tempting fragrance that will fulfill all of your hidden desires. Perfect for a night in, this candle will intoxicate with sophisticated notes of bergamot, musk, sheer leather. Yeah. And what is that? A mollify? A, a, a mollify lemon? I have no idea of that variety of lemon. I know quite a few varieties of lemon, but I have never run across that one before. So, a mullif, um, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm putting an extra I in there. A mulfi, a mulfi lemon, bergamot, sheer leather. Okay, so the leather, that, that's almost, I apologize. That is a given because this smells like uh, when you walk, speaking of uh, outlets, like when you walk into a store, an outlet that sells leather products, Wilson's leather, brand new leather coats, brand new leather bags, leather shoes. I think the only thing is that, it, you know, usually to me, I get, a, I always mix up rose and leather it's amazing how the two smell alike and i think in this case the citrus is so large that i did not i did not come to to leather and it just says musk uh so what did i say i said sandalwood yeah i don't feel bad saying sandalwood because there's that musk, at in some level, has to be something wooden. Where did I put? I gotta put these candles up here. All right. So does that accurately portray? You now this goes to everyone. Does that accurately portray anyone's forbidden desires? Now come on, don't censor. Your, I mean, censor yourself in the form like keep it clean, right? This is a you know clean area. But, you know, does that, does that, does that tickle your fancy? Anybody? Like, you know, if some man, woman wearing this gray tie walks by and they smell like an alf alfimi lemon, bergamot, 
musky, but big time lime, like they just took a dip and uh, like pulverized lime zest and juice. I really did like the fragrance. I really, I really did. I don't wear colognes, but I would not be opposed to wearing that. And I see, I'm sorry that I keep picking out the same people, but Pug Life said, I would like a vanilla musk. And vanilla is a really good um, word. I mean, it's not something that obviously jumps out, but I, if somebody said there was some vanilla in there, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because it's soft, it's soft. It, something about it doesn't make it powdery. There's nothing talcum powdery, uh, talcum powdery about it. Uh, Amalfi Coast is in Italy. Okay, so uh, I know the Serrano, Serrano Lemon. Well, that's Tuscan, though. Thank you for that, Shona. I appreciate the help there. And mainframe midsummer's night so mainframe were you guessing that smell like midsummer's night or is that your favorite i spy elvira says omega red very good eye yeah i got uh that's an original ad i don't i think i think you're the first person who's ever pointed that out that's been up there for a while that's an original ad for elvira's pinball machine scared stiff how thick are the wicks? The wicks are pretty thin. Uh, very, very tight, tightly wound. Uh, um, I shouldn't say tightly wound. A, a smaller gauge cotton wick. But trust me, if it was any more than that, it would be too much heat for such a candle, right? You would get into problems of it being too hot, but also a potential glass breaking situation, which would not be good. The leather adds a bad boy grit. I like that. Too much lime is a bit sporty for me. That is a good one too. Is that is that is that what we uh, you know associate with more of a sporty fragrance? Is the citrus that makes sense? Okay. And if I missed anyone's comment and you really want me to answer, want me to see it, don't be afraid to post it again. But I do want to move on. Which one are we going to do? French macaroon. Now, uh, you know, a macaroon, uh, you know, like a, like a British macaroon, English macaroon, um, is far different than a French macaroon. Most of you probably know this. Um, it's spelled differently too. Um, and this is truly one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, these French macaroons. I've told this story so many times, but um, while I was attending the Culinary Institute of America in um, uh, Napa Valley, not the one in Hyde Park, New York, but the one in Napa Valley, uh, I would go late at night, and what they would ha have happen is all of the students' food that they baked and cooked all day long would be thrown in the garbage. It was horrible, horrible. Trust me, they tried not to. They couldn't donate it. It's just a sad situation that all that food has to go to waste. But anyway, there was always mounds of French macaroons, and I would just, just eat, eat, and then obviously load up my little messenger bag of French macaroons to display in my apartment. Um, let's get a close-up of this jar. There's something about when they're fresh, you know, they're, they have that really crispy, crunchy outside, but still very airy. So once you bite down, you get into the really dense part of the cookie. So dense that sometimes you know, kind of sticks to your teeth like caramel. And, and of course, we have that decadent light filling inside that, you know, you name it, can be infused with just about anything you want. Um, and 
let's get in closer. Uh, look at that. So that's what the label, what you see on the label right there. Um, an assortment of macaroons. Uh, I'm trying to see like, if I can like pinpoint what any of those are. I see some toasted coconut, some green flecks. Maybe that's mint. And um, so once again, they're kind of taking this, uh, not, not just beverage, but I see, you see that little bowl from like a motor, motor and pestle filled with sorbet. Oh, that, that's such a, talk about wonderful pairing. Sorbet, like a raspberry sorbet with, um, you know, four or five <laughs> French macaroons. That's a, that's just, that's a beautiful picture. And if you look in the background there, it looks like we're at a diner too. Uh, and there's some, uh, f you know, uh, full vanilla beans right there. That's about $15, $20 worth of Madagascar vanilla beans just sitting right there. Um, but let's see what this smells like, shall we? Very pink. It will magenta would be the right way to describe that color. Um, very cakey, very, um, first impressions, you know, whenever something like vanilla cake with, um, uh, uh, with cake with vanilla extract, you know, whenever that comes to mind, it brings me to the happy birthday cupcakes or even full size cake, um, so there's definitely that. There's a warm cakiness that's gonna have the saltiness, uh, the rich, uh, clarified butter aspect, and there's this indis. Well, it's not that it's indistinguishable, but you know, there's with so many candles in this concept, like cookies and and you know christmas cookie sugar cookie there's always this vanilla frosting vanilla cake or yellow cake let's say like a lemon chiffon there's this balance of the two and it's not that they're not they're not distinguishable but they always seem to come together in a package deal so i mean so far we're building that cupcake sitting in lots of butter, uh, lots. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a strong butter. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but the butter is so intense that it borderlines like uh, movie theater buttered popcorn. Like it's that aggressive of a butter. Imagine if they made popcorn flavored like, like a birthday cake. Like, forget the white cheddar, forget the, the butter. Well, not forget the butter, but have the butter with the vanilla frosting and cake. Would that, would you enjoy something like that? Some warm sugar, like cotton candy fresh cotton candy. So the sugar, whether you, you make caramel at home or toffee at home, um, that aroma of caramelization is happening. It's a very warm smell. Shortbread cookies, I'm saying that because butter but it does have like a wafer like, um, I mean, I'm imagining, like if I was smelling something, if I had a blindfold on, someone was telling me to smell this. I mean, I'm like, oh, that could be like vanilla wafer cookies. That could be a shortbread cookie. 
Danish butter cookies. Oh, yeah. Nothing fruity, which is not surprising. What else would I be looking for? I don't smell like dry ingredients. Sometimes saltiness can come through like baking soda, baking powder, uh, or just like raw milled uh, all-purpose flour. Definitely smells cooked, baked, and it's it smells warm, right? You know where the pear, you smell it. It smells cold. It smells refreshing. This is all subjective, guys. It's subjective. Uh, where this, to me, is definitely something that's not raw or in its uncooked stage. This is post-cooked, post-baked. I mean, you could, someone could even tell me that this is a red velvet cake candle, and I'd be like, okay. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying that that's how all of these candles, whether it's a French macaroon, happy birthday cake, you know, snowflake, sugar, you know, cookie, that is an actual candle name. Um, even if this was promoted as having tons of sprinkles, even if this was promoted with having something of chocolate in it, um, all of that would apply, you know? Like, I don't, to me, the illusion wouldn't be broken if this was called any one of those other warm, sweet treats. I guess the only other thing I could say is no baking spices, which is obvious, no baking spices. And um, uh, no nuttiness. These are other things I look for when I look for, uh, when I'm looking at uh, warm sweet treats so no nuttiness no um, uh, fruitiness either all right I'm ready I'm ready let's read the description of French macaroon there are no limits to the delights of a Parisian pastry shop. The pop art confection, confections in every hue, the irresistible possibilities of textures and taste, and the pleasures of surprising flavors. We set out to create this perfect mingling of elegance and whimsy with a nod to traditional French ingredients. We've whipped up in a Addictive fragrance sprinkled with notes of vanilla, cream, and coconut, then added a hint of musk to serve up a deeper richness and more decadent experience for the senses. Musk. That has only happened a few times. And I said it on just earlier. I said, you remember when I said that pear skin had a musky quality? I stole that from Yankee, one of Yankee Candle's description. It was the uh, pear, poached pear flambe a couple of years ago. And they, they wrote um, fruit musk, fruit musk as one of the, the fragrance notes. And I'm like, wait a minute. I've never considered fruit to have any kind of musk, but ever since then, I'm like, yeah, I, I can kind of see that. I mean, it's not like any other kind of musk. It's not like a floral musk. It's not like a leather. Uh, it's not like sandalwood or amber kind of musk. But I think amber is a good thing to to describe here because if there is musk and I guess I can see it you know think about warm like amber amber gris something that's described as golden amber warmth right we smell it doesn't it just evoke warmth amber can't be cold amber is more of a warm note subjective but again it's the language of fragrance the fragrance industry or just 
not even the industry, just how we discuss fragrances and aromas. Uh, so I can see, although I would not see something like amber in here, I do get that warmth that I talked about. And maybe whatever kind of musk is in this candle is creating that post-baked quality that I talked about. The fragrance notes, butter, number one is butter, vanilla, cream, coconut. Yeah, yeah, and musk. See, coconut musk, if they said coconut musk, or maybe not on the jar, but if they said that in the description, I don't know, maybe that would translate a little bit better in my mind. And maybe it would make it sound a little bit more delectable, make it sound a little bit more tasty. But um, what I have to say is that, I mean, it's, it's nothing wildly different than so many other candles that we smell, but it's really good. It's really, really good. I love cookies in candle form, absolutely. Especially, um, you know, when you're really just, like after autumn and the fall, and you're really just tired of the baking spices. Like Christmas comes and you get more clove and you get more star anise and you get more ginger and nutmeg and cinnamon. And you're like, you know, it's like enough already. Sometimes just give me the sugar and vanilla, baby. Give me the sugar and vanilla. Five dollars from Stephanie Hall. Happy Sunday, Shane. Sorry I missed the last two live streams. Stephanie, no need to apologize for that. But thank you uh, deeply for the, the, the pledge, the donation. Again, as a reminder to everybody, all of the funds go into the Candle Enthusiast's own, not the Candle Enthusiast me, the Candle Enthusiast production company uh, uh, checking account. All pledges go for future videos. And so I really, really appreciate it. The smallest, the smallest of donations, not that $5 is small, but even a dollar is not too small. Thank you for that, Stephanie. She's a real like cheerleader for the candle enthusiast. Had to introduce my daughter to Killer Clowns after the last stream, says Penny. So if you guys can see, they're a little bit hidden at this moment, but I still have the Killer Clowns from Outer Space 8 Candle. Actually, it's a 9 Candle collection. Um, these were all carnival-themed fragrances. And oh, oh man. I actually, on Mother's Day, I brought these over, um, sat down with my family, and we passed these around the table. I hope the folks from Erie Candle Company is, is watching this, because this was, you know, this doesn't happen often. It usually happens around Christmas, but like when I get to share candles or something uh, fragrant or aromatic, something I'm talking about on this channel or something that I enjoy, um, um, you know, it's always special to share it with friends and family. And this was the case, you know, Mother's Day, we were passing around these candles and I didn't tell them what they smelled like. And everyone was trying to guess. And it was just so much fun. It was, it was almost a game and it echoed the fun uh, of these, these candles. These large candles will be back in stock. Erie Candle Company, Erie Candle Co. If you want to uh, follow them on Instagram. Uh, I'll put their link in the description below uh, after this video is over. Um, this collection is, they can't keep it in stock, but um, they're offering a sample, a, a sampler of all of the fragrance, um, a, the whole collection. And this way you can get every candle, smell them, see what you like. And if you want to order these massive jars, these tumblers, uh, you can do that. But even these massive jars, I think they're only $15. So make sure you become a member of the Candle Enthusiast Facebook group if you want a heads up when these go back, uh, when they get back in stock. Uh, because the, the I'm working with the proprietors of this company 
and they told me they would give me a heads up before they even announce it uh, on their social media. So this way the candle enthusiasts um, will have first stab at those killer clowns from outer space. The buttered popcorn and the funnel cake are the two of my favorites. Uh, Corinne, hey Shane, lovely to see you. Hope you're keeping well and safe. Thank you, Corinne. I, I'm, I'm doing good. I think I'm doing just as good as anybody, you know? It's, it's, you know, everything's a little rough these days, right? But we gotta, we gotta sit down. We gotta do more of these lives. And uh, everyone, if you're by your computer, smash that. That's right. I said smash. Smash that thumbs up button. Uh, let's get this thumbs up count higher. It really helps me out. Um, had to enjoy. Okay, we read that. Omega says, Stephanie, I think the Killer Clown candles would be great for Halloween, but they're out of stock at this moment. Sorry, that I just repeated that. Uh, I just love... I would love to get those, says Nicole. Nicole, didn't you just watch Killer Clowns? Uh, I was just going to watch that live. I was just going to watch that live, and that I noticed that I was live now, says Stephanie. I gotta watch it later. Uh, please do, even if you skim through it. The candles are so much fun. Hey Shane, have you smelled their classic Monsters collection? So that is one thing I forgot to say. I'm sorry that we're taking a little bit of break. We still have one more village candle to go here, but I missed this as I was cleaning up after the live stream last week. They had this little, looked like a little, you know, coin medallion piece of chocolate. How fitting, but inside was their Dracula fragrance. So I haven't smelled their, they have like Creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein, Dracula, and a few others. Whoa. Dracula smells like big time Hawaiian punch with just a little bit of red wine in there. It's funny how um, when we think of Dracula, we always go to a concept that is a red drinkable fluid. And in this case, I mean, this is a little bit of Hawaiian punch. This is a little bit of Capri Sun. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't have grade school written all over it. You know what I mean? Like, if this was a, a beverage marketed towards adults, I would drink it. Uh, really pretty and super powerful, this little guy, as were the Killer Clown collections. Um, I really didn't sm I quickly smelled that after last week's live, but that was really my first time smelling it. So, um... All right, we have another limited edition candle by Village Candle. And if anyone's joining in for the giveaway, it's going to happen. Hang in tight. We're going to have a Q&A after this candle, and someone is going to get their choice of any one of these candles. This one is, we see the limited edition right there, right there. I'm trying to put my ring finger on it. A salted caramel latte. We have a lot to live up to. Uh, there's no sense of me showing you that when I can just show you this. Um, you know, beautiful, that looks like a freshly baked baguette colored wax, but it also looks like a milky espresso color. Um, definitely uh, suits, complements the image on the label, which is this guy, kind of like a baby pastel turquoise uh, or sea foam. It's the best I could describe it. Um, nice little color that pops uh, and contrast that drizzle of caramel, whipped cream, and there's some baby marshmallows on that sucker as well. Look at that. Yeah. I, tell me you guys wouldn't want to be nose deep into that mug. It doesn't look like any latte I know, but... And here's um, 
Again, context, context, context. Village Candle um, really does a great job with this. Um, so putting everything into context, we see like this, a picture that looks like it's like in a magazine, country home living, uh, beautiful interior design, also uh, colors that complement the wax and the label. Uh, but also we have the French press, stainless steel French press in there, uh, which is not what you use to make espresso, but that works. Maybe if you make espresso at home, you, you can make that work. And then we see some Belgian waffles that, I'm sorry if I'm overanalyzing this, but those Belgian waffles kind of look like they're made with some kind of whole grain uh, a flour, do they not? They have a not so much a golden color as they do kind of a rich brown, but it, it, it matches the caramel and the color of the wax just nicely. So let's give this one a sniff and see where the spectrum lies. Okay, uh, Rolos, Rolos. The little chocolate candies that come in the cylindrical package with the foil, the caramel inside those babies. Werther's Caramel Candies, the originals. I don't know why they call it the original, Werther's Caramel Candy. Was there something other than the original? Werther's Original, uh, Werther's Original. What I mean by that, it's an extra buttery caramel. Like this is not, even though Werther's candies are hard, this is, you smell this and immediately think of some form of caramel that is incredibly chewy, malleable, uh, or uh, in like liquid form, like a high viscosity syrup drizzle. Little bit of maple syrup mixed in that caramel. Oh yeah. Which would make sense with those pancakes, right? And I wouldn't, I don't think it's, ne I don't think I'd be, I don't think I have a problem saying it. So I'm just gonna say, I don't have a problem saying that there might be a touch of baking spices in here. But if I know myself um, as I do, um, it's probably the associations. When you smell something this caramel, this savory, this buttery, it's easy for your mind to connect the dots. So I, I don't think baking spices would be on the fragrance notes or even in the description, but I am getting that Belgian waffle thing that's coming to mind. So imagine a, a, a syrup, a caramel syrup that is marketed as like a walnut, a walnut maple caramel drizzle. Like maybe they have that at one of the pumps at Starbucks or in a squeeze bottle. I need to readjust my nose. are gonna kill me for saying this because I, I just I need to think of another synonym another product other than cool whip uh, cool whip um, has that distinct whipped cream smell and a lot of the time in candles we're getting one of two things frosting or cool whip whipped cream really doesn't have a, an aroma it's really more of a it smells like you know it's, it's I mean, it's, it has an aroma, but it smells like dairy, right? It's, it's, it's milk, uh, cream. So um, this is more of like a Cool Whip sugar concoction, confection. There is a fresh baked bread thing. And I said that that's what, I said it looked like a baguette. And it has nothing to do with the latte, unless we're talking about a biscotti, 
because the biscotti would have, and I said walnut, the biscotti would have usually almond, but you know, um, that double baked, really crispy, crunchy, uh, sweet, it's a, it's a cookie essentially um, that's being served alongside this latte. The Cool Whip is really just gonna bridge this marshmallow. Uh, you know, I am no vanilla, marshmallow, all that stuff is gonna be in there. Just go with me on the Cool Whip thing, okay? Because Cool Whip has vanilla and um, it's, it smells creamy but not dairy. I just can't get over that baked bread thing. It's not yeasty baked bread. It smells more like like Bisquick. Yeah, I mean, the nuttiness, you're always going to get, I mean, when you caramelize sugar, the byproduct of caramelizing sugar, heat, butter, together, right? Caramel smells like nuts, right? So it's not that there's nuts in here it's that caramel is always going to smell nutty but guess what also smells nutty coffee beans hold on hold on lighter coffee beans medium coffee beans or you know if if we we use like the city roast um uh, or something lighter if we use that terminology um you know costa rican coffee honduras coffee colombian coffee um all gonna be in that medium range that's nutty um, as we get darker the nutty aromas really become more smoky uh, can take on more of like a, a, a like a like a roasted nut and then no nuts at all so when I say that coffee beans smell like nuts certain kinds of roasted coffee beans so that nuttiness even though it's the caramel that I think I'm smelling um, yeah, we can attribute that to that to the coffee, but check this out. Latte is going to be made with espresso. Espresso, again, typically, typically, especially if we're talking about Italy, uh, espresso is going to be made with a much, much darker uh, roast. It's going to be made with espresso beans, which is a dark roast, typically, historically. Um, so... Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if I would label this coffee, I'm being really picky here. <laughs> you have to understand this. I'm being a real geek here. I'm, this is not making fun of this candle. But if I were to label this candle, I couldn't use the word latte. I couldn't use the word cappuccino. But I could use the word, you know, like um, uh, caramel and cream infused cup of joe. You know, a good old-fashioned cup of coffee, Dunkin' Donuts, um, your local diner that makes good coffee uh, with tons of cream, caramel drizzled on top, some some whipped cream on there or Cool Whip, um, and that caramel really warm and throwing off a lot of aromatics. I just don't. I smell coffee shop. I just don't smell coffee bean at all. But let's read the fragrance notes. Really good coffee shop fragrance, especially if you do put the cream and sugar and sweeteners into your coffee. Instead of starting the day in a rush, celebrate quiet morning moments with breakfast in bed, a tray adorned with freshly baked pastries, fresh fruit, and a sweet creamy latte lies next to you. Enjoy the warm rays of rising sun while the smell of golden caramel, rich vanilla, and hot espresso awaken your senses. Fragrance notes of rich caramel, vanilla fresh espresso so i really liked this fresh baked pastries thing because i knew that wasn't in my head fresh fruit don't know where that's coming from uh, but I, I don't know if they're suggesting that 
the candle smells this way or they're just trying to paint a portrait of that tray of breakfast in bed. But then they go on to say, sweet cream, sweet creamy latte lays, lays next to, lies next to you. Um, golden caramel rich vanilla hot espresso awaken your senses. So I'm not going to be overly dorky about the whole coffee espresso thing. No question, this smells like coffee shop. And coffee shop aromas remind us of drinking our cup of coffee when we're there or ordering our cup of coffee. So I think that this would serve as um, uh, an, an, uh, kind of that aromatic catalyst of creating that that rich experience of having breakfast in bed, if that's what you decide to do, um, have bringing that coffee shop into your living space, into your bedroom, into your bathroom. Because who hasn't drank a cup of coffee in their bathroom? Um, uh, but um, yeah, uh, I think that is uh, well executed. I. I um, I'm trying to think of other, um, uh, I don't, I hate comparing candles to candles, but if you enjoyed Yankee Candles, salted caramel, uh, this has actually got a little bit, I think, more going on in there. Um, so use that as your starting point. Um, or like I said, if you just put Irish cream, hazelnut creamers in your cup of coffee, this always seems to be the story with coffee scented candles. Um, think of the ingredients that go into a cup of coffee, not necessarily the coffee itself. But you might smell this and you might say, whoa, whoa, this smells exactly like my coffee in the morning out of the mocha pot, out of the coffee dripper, out of my French press, out of my Chemex, out of my uh, espresso machine, out of my AeroPress. Whatever you use to brew your coffee, all of these things are subjective, folks. Uh, so once again, I want to thank Village Candle uh, for allowing us uh, to um, have this unboxing on today's Smell It Sunday. Um, it's a really generous, generous offer to anyone who sends uh, free candles, but uh, I, I really want to start, like I said, giving back. So um, I'm going to be doing more giveaways. Hopefully we can do a giveaway every Sunday. Um, so thank you to Village Candle. And if you're not burning Village Candles right now, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. I, I, I know what a lot of people think. I'll tell you what I thought the first time I saw Village Candle. Not the first time. But the you know, it's so easy to be walk. Cause I, you know, and I don't know where you find village candles, but th they used to only just be like in grocery stores. So I'd be walking around a grocery store. I'm like, oh, there's a Yankee candle. Oh, no, it's not. It's a village candle. And I always assumed that they were ripping off Yankee candle. Come to find a uh, village candle is a very old company that is not as old as Yankee candle, but does stretch back into the eighties. Um, it's a, a main uh, based company in the main uh, USA um, and uh, they really have uh, they always sparked my interest because of the two wicks and their some of their fragrances but um, something that's been going on I think I don't think I know that there's been some reworking in the company and so maybe with this reworking they're bringing in bright new fresh ideas breaking out of the comfort zone that they usually are in, which are just typical, sometimes they're just typical florals. You know, you got like the Fraser fir Christmas tree, you got the cookie, you got the apple pie. Well, they seem to be pushing the envelope a little bit. Uh, and I think the Halloween collection, the fantasy collection, and some of these here really demonstrate that they're, they're going out there. They're looking for new ideas and I really want to commend them for that. Uh, and uh, the the most recent village candle that I've burned was Winter Clementine. I love this candle. I gotta talk about like 
my top fragrances that I've been burning recently. I have to do like a, a video on those, maybe next week's live or maybe even during the week. But uh, that candle, it's not super complex, but it's, it's just so pleasant. And the candles last forever, last forever. I haven't even put a dent in that uh, winter, winter clementine candle, and I've burned it at least eight times. I know a lot of you guys just burn your candles all day long, all day long, all day long. I don't do that. Um, I burn them for the you know I feel, you know four or five hours at, at a time, and you know may also being very conscious to when your pool wax pool gets deep enough to blow the candle out let it solidify and then relighting that is not just a recommendation it's it's physics i don't want to start teaching a physics lessons because I, I dropped out of physics in high school but it's not just a suggestion this really will make your candle last longer perform better and won't uh damage your candle uh, before the, fragr the, the fragrance oil has had even a chance to come out of the candle. So just make sure that you're following the, the rules and guidelines to candle companies' um, recommendations when you burn their, these candles. So thank you, Village Candle. Let's get to the Q&A. And let's get s answer some questions and... Um, and um, pick, a, pick a winner. Uh, I don't want to see that. What I want to see is the Candle Enthusiasts. So once again, join, swing on over. Candle Enthusiasts Facebook group. Um, right here I posted the thumbnail to this video. I do this every Sunday. And in the comments, this is where... Uh, you can leave questions, you know, if it's a question or if it's, you want a shout out or even if it's just a, a comment, uh, uh, I, I will read them. We have a lot today uh, because it's not just Facebook, but it's also Instagram. So I'll do as many as I can. But let's bring up this before. Okay. You guys don't need to be seeing the page. All right, Nicole Menard. Nicole, is that the right way you say your last name? Menard? Am I emphasizing the, 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 the men part? I, I don't know. Or maybe it's the N that I overemphasize. Menard. Um, Bryce wants to know, what is your favorite candy? Twizzlers. And don't give me those cherry Twizzlers. None of that. None of that stuff. Uh, Twizzlers and no... I don't have any problems against red vines, but it's going to be Twizzlers all the way. And they're quiet, right? You can take them out of the package and eat them in the theater without all the plastic rustling. I'm sorry that sounded so angry. Bryce asked that question, and I'm saying it like I'm angry. It's Twizzlers, Bryce. It's Twizzlers. You should have known that. No, I'm just kidding. And give uh, Bryce a high five for me. Um, he's one of our young uh, candle enthusiasts since the beginning. Rianne says, how fun, a Q and A. Are beach candles different? Uh, do they smell all the same? And what is your favorite summer candle on a hot day? So, um, the, 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 uh, beach, okay, so this is just a, a general statement, generalizing here, um, that whether we're talking about beach candles, nautical candles, uh, lakeside candles, anything that has to do with out in the great open and a near a body of water. And it's not just candles, whether it could be, it could be a laundry detergent or Glade bathroom spray. If we're talking about this genre of at sea or near sea by water, the industries the industry's um, formula for creating that experience is in part a mixture of florals and citrus. Um, a lot of the times they'll say beach flowers, um, which, 
you know, I, okay, so imagine being in Cape Cod or in Nantucket, uh, uh, smelling a, a lot of the flowers that grow by the shore. I suppose uh, I've never really lived by the beach, but um, it's always a, a soft, fruity, floral uh, mixed with citrus, uh, usually lemon lime. So the from there, that's the base. You can make the, f the florals more pungent. You can make the citrus brighter and have it be more of a fresh air experience. But I suppose the concept that has always come from this idea of mixing, you know, if you're by the beach and the wind is blowing and it's picking up the scent of the flowers and the saltiness, the saline saltiness of the sea and the green vegetation, uh, that grows uh, beneath the surface. Uh, uh, what would smell like that, right? So um, nine out of ten times, usually it's more than that. Um, it's it's beach candles. Correct me if you think I'm wrong. Give me a great example of anything, a candle, any concept that's by the water that doesn't have citrus and florals as a base, a, like kind of like a, a starting line. From there, they can spin off. So if, if I don't know anyone who has a problem with citrus, but uh, if you have a problem with florals, uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it's, it's a hard thing to do, find a beach candle that works for you. I hope that's uh, a good way to respond to that. And Rianne, what is my favorite summer candle? Anything that's refreshing. If it reminds me of a cold beverage on ice, I'm good. Laura says, I know some candles do not have lids. Does this affect the shelf life or scent of a candle if they come uh, with no lids? Thanks. Uh, Laura, so, okay, so without getting into chemistry, uh, oxidation, oxidation, yes, that it does affect everything. Um, if you have a lid on a jar, what's what's locked in that jar will be the only thing locked in that jar which also means that the oxygen in that jar could affect the candle but usually it's just on the surface the problem is things like temperature change and humidity with candles without lids the wax can contract um, and expand and what that'll do is kind of open it up and make it very porous so um, do you ever look at a candle with a glass lid and you can kind of see that it's not like on the glass anymore? I mean, sometimes that's just natural when they pour the candles. It pulls away from the glass a little bit. But I'm talking like when it has a texture. It's when um, there's too much air circulation going on because the wax is going to, at some capacity, evaporate and so will the fragrance oil. The good news is it's mostly the top part of the candle. So once you let it pool, once you get it down, you know, a, a third of an inch, you should be good to go. But my suggestion is find something at a craft store that works for you and make your own lid just to put your mind at ease because I feel you. I don't, I don't enjoy when my candles don't come with lids unless they're meant to be burnt immediately. But for me, that's... That's, that's rare. It's like saying this wine is only meant to be drunk immediately. Well, for a lot of people, they buy drink to, this is a real statistic, real statistic. 85% of people who buy a bottle of wine buy it to drink that night. But for, you know, enthusiasts, you know, a lot of like like us, we, we, if we buy tons of candles, or if you're, you know, a wine enthusiast, um, a lot of the times we buy to hold on to for the right occasion. So lids, rec yes, I highly recommend. Um, thanks, Laura. Eric says, "What is the best village candle for summer?" Ugh. Okay, um, there's two that I'm thinking of. I'm trying to give you ones that are not basic, you know, a little bit. There's one called River and Stone. 
So remember what I said, river and stone, by the water, right? But it has a, a minerality to it. Um, there's something, you know, it, it's got more forest smells than it does floral. Forest, not floral. And um, it does have some wooden notes in there, which makes it can make you think of like saturated wood on the forest floor, like, like almost like by like you're by a creek. I would wish it had more of like this wet stone quality. It doesn't, but River and Stone, I believe that's the name. It was a limited edition. Uh, check to see if it's on the website. And then another one was Elderberry and Prosecco. Prosecco is a sparkling wine from Italy. Um, it's the wine that's historically used to make the Bellini. Um, so elderberry and this sparkling wine, not champagne, sparkling wine, um, kind of a, a take on an, uh, a Bellini. A Bellini uses white peach, where uh, the elderberry brings more of this black or bluish, darker berry fruit flavor. Those are two, I think, great ones. If you like the outdoors, robust, lakeside or creek side, or if you want something refreshing, I'll give you two options. Oh, and Eric gave me a thank you already. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, Morgan, when you read salt or sea salt in a candle name, where does that scent come from? I don't, I don't, I don't know, Morgan, but that is such a great question because, um, so Morgan is addressing, you know, let, let's talk about a candle that smells um, uh, salty, sea-like. Uh, Black Sand Beach was a great one um, that smelt salty. Bay Breeze by Yankee Candle is another great one. Uh, I wish I could throw out some by Yankee Candle or Village Candle right now, but um, um, I don't know what they're using, but it's not an essential oil. So in the fragrance world, in colognes and perfumes, you're seeing uh, essential oils and absolutes. They're two different ways of, uh, and there's actually a third way using CO2, but I'm not even going to go there, like reverse osmosis kind of thing. But those are when you're actually getting the organic compounds, specifically the oils, um, out of the item. So if it says rose essential oil, guess what? It's made from rose. When you hear the words fragrance oil, it's made in a lab. And that's not bad because most fragrances, just about everything that we find in candles, I know Bath and Body Works puts essential oils in there, but it's a small percentage of essential oils that they're using because they're highly perishable. They, they don't smell great for a long time if you just let them sit there open to oxygen. Um, but um, so fragrance oils uh, can be made with organic compounds like aldehydes. Um, this is really great stuff if you want to geek out uh, like Chanel, uh, the Chanel perfume. Um, that was the first perfume ever made with aldehydes. Um, there's different categories of aldehydes, but they're derived from many different things. And when you smell them, you're like, that smells like nothing. This smells like an orange. How did this come from whatever it comes from? Um, and so aldehydes, and then there's, you know, other artificially created plum, fig, cucumber, a um, lot of fruits, tomatoes, coffee beans. And to your point, salt stone soil maybe the things in the soil but soil like as an earth you can't make this you can't make essential oil out of that you can't make an absolute out of that so it needs to be created in a lab artificially so they've obviously in the in the fragrance world they've been like a candle world they've been able to mimic saltiness beautifully uh, I don't know what the compound is. It, maybe it's an aldehyde. I don't know. Uh, but you know, things when I, you know when I when I smell like outdoor themes, I want to smell things like you know chalky limestone soil. I want to I want to smell things like clay rich, silty, uh, fertile soils. I want to smell like the lumps of of 
of rocky, um, uh, infertile, dried out soil in, in the vineyards that you'd pick up and you'd squeeze and they crumble to pieces. All of the different kinds of earth and stone um, that we find out in the wilderness is not represented in the candle world. And I really wish that there was a company that would invest more time and money, it would take a lot of time and money, but invest a lot more into research and creating artificial aromas that at least get us closer to, to creating these things that we can't put into candles because we don't get authentic smelling dirt or minerality. Minerality is the word that I use um, in, in candles. Salt is one of the rare exceptions. But that's a great question, Morgan. I just wish I could answer it. Maria says, during this tough time, there are good things among fo folks rising to the top. Let me start over. During, during this tough time, there are good things among folks rising to the top. Helpfulness, strength, kindness, etc. Which candles, which candle, which candles would you choose to represent these positive aspects of humanity we're seeing right now? That is such a great question and so uh, thought provoking. Um, you know, um, in my little notepad, I have a, a notepad, just candle ideas that, you know, I, I, you know, I just, I, I'm not going to be making candles. Don't, don't, don't worry. But I, you know, I get a little, t you know, I, I tickle myself by, by being able to like come up with these phony candle concepts. And there was a one that I wrote the other day that had, you know, uh, crazy things. Um, uh, I won't get into it, but it was called, uh, I'm going to screw up the name, La Creation du Monde, um, or The Beginning of the World. And I was really just thinking in my mind, you know, the, the if anyone's had the beer, La Fin du Monde, The End of the World. Um, I was thinking like, you know, that would be a, a great candle right now, just as a topical thing. Because, you know, we could look at this as, and it is in many ways, uh, a huge disaster. I mean, in, in every way, it's a huge disaster. But we can only hope, I can only hope that even during really dark times, troubling times, challenging times, that we can always, as one, as a whole, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, the world holding hands, right? Uh, we can look at this as a, a new beginning and a candle called the beginning of the world or the creation of the world, images of clouds and thunder and all this crazy weather constructing and deconstructing the world, a brand new world for us to live in. I think that would be a great metaphor. That's a great question. I was just curious if you ever bought any fun face masks, says Rachel. Oh, why am I doing this? I hope this is what you're talking about. Otherwise, it's going to make no sense. So I'm not going to lie. I considered for a brief moment. No, I didn't. I didn't. I, um, I was going to say I considered wearing this to the grocery store. I would never do that. But if this is a fun face mask, I don't know if you meant something more specifically by that. Yeah, I have tons of masks. I don't wear them, at least not on a regular basis. Thank you, Rachel. Did we get all of the comments? I'm going to switch over to to um, I have a feeling I missed some here to Instagram. Come on now. Excuse me while I refresh the page. I don't feel like I read 20 comments. 
Oh, I did miss a bunch. Lauren says, and, and Lauren is working right now, she informed me, hopefully you watch this later, Lauren, I would like to know what your least favorite thing to clean is. Let me read that again, just to make sure. I would like to know what your least favorite thing to clean is. Um... I would say uh, the car, although, you know, you know what's really bad? Dusting candles, dusting candles, and I keep all of my holiday stuff, like out of closets. I have even the stuff that I just use here in the studio, like accessories for candles and things that I should be using more for the background. Uh, all of this stuff is just here on big metro racks. Here, here, all the way, almost all the way around the room. And uh, I do give them a nice dusting every so often. But once a year, spring cleaning, I really go at it. Thank you, Lauren. Penny says, since you are mentioning Village Candle, and I know they have the same jar as Yankee, Kringle, as in country candle and goose creek my question is why is the jar so common she's speaking of the apothecary jar that these three companies use i adore the glass in the kringle line do you ever choose a candle sometimes because of the vessel so the apothecary jar i get almost 100 percent of the time for yankee candle because it's just tradition but funnily enough, it does have a purpose, um, the shape. Um, it has a purpose and it has, a pro it has some, there's some pros and there's some cons. Uh, maybe, uh, can I address that? I think I can address it. Let's just hope it, it works out. Let me try to see if we can show I'm always telling people that I, I've done tons of research when it comes to uh, how fragrance oil travels in your living space, uh, in the variables of currents, uh, ventilation, uh, air conditioners, ceiling fans, all of these variables in your uh, humidity, elevation, all, all of these things matter. So, I have a Yankee candle jar. Do I have, I have another Yankee candle jar, but it's a different jar. So it's not like Bath and Body, so at least this way I'm not like doing like a Bath and Body Works thing here. Okay. And my remote control for the fog machine. Let's just make sure the camera is in a good place here. So the best way to, to look to see how your candle's performing in your particular living space is to go to like Party City and buy a very inexpensive fog machine or buy a good one if you like Halloween. But I'm gonna show you something uh, that I hope works, okay? I'm gonna take, my fog machine is right down here. I wish you could see it, but you don't really need to. I need the controller, right? Bam. Lock some fog in there. Let's do that a second time. Now keep in mind, I do have the AC on right now. So I do have a lot of air moving around me. Okay, let's turn them so you can't see them. Let's try to make this perfectly fair. I'm gonna take these lids off and just watch the fog. Now, fog is vapor. It's not smoke, it's vapor. And when you burn candles, they release, well, some smoke if you're doing it wrong, but uh, the fragrance oil is going to be in vapor form. 
warm vapor from the fog machine, warm vapor from the candles. It's on, the only difference is it's visible, okay? Okay, so it's it's kind of it's kind of steady. You see what's happening? There's air moving around the room. But look at our fragrance oil. Uh oh, some movement. Just gonna blow a little bit. See what happened here? It's pretty much empty, right? The lip on the Yankee Candle jar, uh, it is is not only going to distrib distribute the, the the vapors more slowly. But it's not going, yeah, so like you're not going to light it. Like this thing just emptied out. Think about you burning your candle and your fragrance oil just going all over the place. Where this guy, you see the little fog here? We're getting slow distribution out of that candle, right? Look at the difference. Now, we could talk about a lot of the reasons why that does that. The lip stays cool. Right, so what happens is we have a little vortex going on inside. The vapor goes in and it kind of circulates. So if you want to really get your living space, big blast of fragrance, bam. But it's also going to be a big blast of fragrance and that's not what I want. I want a little trickle. Uh, so the you know this glass uh, the apothecary jar with the lip does serve a purpose if the glass gets too hot on the top and you can't keep that vortex going uh, the fragrance oil will spill out more so the hotter the glass the more fragrance you'll get it'll come right out see watch well I can't demonstrate hot I can't demonstrate hot, but if I had like this on a hot plate right now, this would come out much more. But if I also threw this in the freezer, it would stay in there. Okay, um, little demonstration. I don't know how helpful that was. I do find that that does make a huge difference. And obviously, the larger the radius, the diameter of the jar, the more. Uh, fragrance oil is going to come out. So when we talk about throw, are we talking about, mm, you see why I don't like this word? Are we talking about uh, the strength of the fragrance oil and the wax? Or are we talking about the output of the vessel? Big difference. Because I don't want to expend all of the oils that are in my jar. If it's vapor and it's spiraling out in there and I blow this out, that vapor is going to condense back into liquid. I don't want to light my candle and have all the fragrance oil come to the top of the wax and expend itself. That's why a lot of people, uh, you know, on the second, third, fourth burns, they're like, oh, it's not as good, it's not as good, because you're burning, you're expending too much of the fragrance oil too quickly. You have to really pay attention to the, your level of heat, get a heat gun, You've seen me use one of those before, uh, but keep a look, uh, a very close look at your wicks and how you're treating your candles. It's a part of being a candle geek. You really need to learn and dabble in a little bit of chemistry and physics. A little demonstration. Um, turning this into high school class. I guess a lot of people are taking school from home these days. Um, I want to, uh, Stephanie says, I want to hear your thoughts on a, on single note candles. If you really love one scent, uh, what would you want, what would you want the candle to be? I was thinking like ginger, single note, or jasmine one, some, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 
Also, can you do a quick reminder of the best way to correct crooked wicks? So crooked wicks, okay, real quick, crooked wicks, uh, Stephanie, if, I gotta lower this page so I can see myself. Crooked wicks, if you're letting that wax pull out too much, the wick, wicks are gonna start to lean, right? So by gauging, only letting your candle get to about one inch pool, it'll never lean in any direction. So if you wanna fix it, uh, I guess you could do a little bit of not too extreme surgery on the candle. Uh, pull it out again and try to straighten it. And as it melts down, keep the wick straight. Uh, but the way to prevent it is from letting it pull too much. Thank you, Stephanie. Shonda. I've become a big fan of Village Candle. I am burning Herb Garden right now. I would love a candle exploding with the aroma of fresh basil. Is there a scent you would like to see made into a candle? Uh, well, fresh basil sounds great. Um, uh, I just used a bar soap that was cypress, cypress, and and basil, I think it was. Uh, uh, there was other ingredients in it, and it was, it was fantastic. Um, um, and I'm just realizing I didn't answer Stephanie's question about the, sing the single notes. Uh, peppermint, Stephanie, would be, I think, my favorite single note candle. I think that's safe to say. Uh, is there a scent you would like to see? Me? Uh, yeah, there's tons of scents. I think I kind of touched on that. Uh, sorry to... Hopefully it sounds like I'm not pushing your question away, Shonda, but like something that really is groundbreaking, which kind of sounds weird, would definitely sound weird to a non-scented candle burner, but something that's groundbreaking in the candle industry. You know, something that's outside of the comfortability of the aroma that we consider home fragrance. You know, you know let me smell, you know, Fermentate, fermenting apples. Let me smell. What are the lovely things that we smell all day or all year round that we love um, that we never put into candles? Um, you know, and a lot of people say, well, like, well, I wouldn't want my house to smell that way. Well, but sh should that dictate the direction of the scented candle industry? Are we looking at candles too much as home fragrance and not art? I don't know. Someone sold a chlorine candle and it reminded me of being at the pool. I'd buy it as long as it didn't give me a headache and it was not toxic. So I don't know. I think, yeah, it's just pushing the envelope, Shonda. Thank you so much for that question. Maggie, and I might have to skip a couple questions. I hope it's okay, but I have a lot of questions. Uh, Maggie says, in your opinion, is the aroma to burning a candle equal to using wax melts? Uh, this, is, this is good because all of these questions are kind of tying into each other. So wax melts expend their oils instantly compared to candles. Instantly. You have, a, you have a cube of wax. You melt that down. You smell it like crazy, but then it's gone, right? You get a half hour, an hour, and it's gone. Um, so I know it works for a lot of people and that's what they want. I've never been a big wax melt person because I love the tradition of lighting a candle, lighting the flame. I like seeing fire, you know, a scented candle. It's, it, it, to me, it's tied to that, but no, I mean, I am, com I'm completely open and love the world of wax melts. I just don't choose to 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 use them in my private time but yeah i think that's just the difference what is the difference uh they expend their oils very fast and you don't have to worry about the mixology right you don't have to get the perfect ratio of wax to fragrance oil to carrier oil like uh, jojoba oil um whatever the carrying oil is in the candle you have to get the perfect ratio for the candle to not only function but to spread the aroma uh, in a wax melt you really just you can skip the measuring and just make sure it's solid and the fragrance oils in there and it'll it'll work 
I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating a little bit. Thanks for that, Maggie. Sh Shona, which skill that you possess has taken you the longest to get good at? My impression of Jeff Goldblum. No, I don't have an impression of Jeff Goldblum. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, editing, F video, video editing. It's something I can safely say I've been doing since I my earliest memories. Editing when I was editing with VHS cassettes to film school where I was editing with actual film to now where I'm editing on a MacBook completely digitally. Uh, I don't feel like by any means I'm a master, but it's something I've been doing and, pr you know, uh, something I'm proud of my skills of video editing, but I'm nowhere close to ever calling myself a master at it. So I, I, I would say video editing is something, is a, a great answer to that question. I take a lot of pride editing it's kind of funny I say that while doing a, a live stream. Um, Ray Vasquez, I am a recent winner, so please uh, don't enter me uh, into the contest. Uh, with summer coming up, I did want to ask your take on aquatic sense. Again, questions are rolling in to the next. So aquatic sense, floral, citrus, I like them. It's hard for me to find one that I burn and love. I love a lot of them just smelling them out of the jar, but I can't burn them. So uh, it takes a lot of search, searching for me. Okay, now it looks like we're back. Laura says, I know some candles do not, okay, so wait, I said that, I did that one. Okay, so now I'm caught up. Let's just do Instagram real quick, and then let's let someone pick out a candle. I'm gonna do this on my phone if that's okay. Excuse the hair. I've needed a haircut for about three months now. There's not much I can do about it. Uh, Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, it's a great time to begin uh, because you will be able to. I can't. Can't do that. Um, candle. Dot enthusiast. I'm trying to post on a daily basis, take some photos for you guys, but also I put little Easter eggs on my videos, but also announce things like these giveaways and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I would love to have a more of a presence on Instagram. So I posted, posted, are you kidding me? Are you, this is not a joke. Well, you might believe it, there's not one question. I can't, I can't this, the camera is not gonna expose this. It will if I hold it up like this. There, I, maybe I wrote too much text. 30 people liked it. Nobody asked a question. Nobody wants to win a village candle, except for you guys who posted in the Facebook group. All right, I get how it goes. I see how it is. I see how it is. Um, let me find something that was. Um, you know what? I love this question. Um, the 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 uh, when you read salt or sea salt in a candle name, where does that scent come from? That's something I really couldn't even answer. But it's something all of us should be thinking about, right? Um, more questions, more curiosity um, about uh, candle burning uh, will make us have a little bit more pride in being a candle geek and learning and, uh, about the process instead of just, um, you know, lighting a candle blindly and just hoping for the best. So because that's a progressive kind of geeky question I would ask, Morgan, uh, I hope you can get in your last name right. I know you, I, I know you pretty well, Morgan. Morgan's another loyal, loyal fan of the candle enthusiast. Morgan Venable, um, I want to. If you're in the chat area, let me know. Is Morgan here? She may not be here. Uh, Morgan, we'll 
wait just a little bit. Oh, she's going to be upset if she watches this later. I should have thought this through. I did say you have to be present. Um, all right. Okay, so Morgan, I have a runner-up prize for you if you show up. But I got I to gotta pick some. Oh, no, here she is. Woo! Cruise Bat 1. Perfect. All right, Morgan. So what I'm going to do is... You scared me for a minute. I want you to pick between, any one of these is fine. Salted Caramel Latte, limited edition, brand new, on uh, the Village Candle website. We also had the Ginger Pear Fizz, which is on sale on Village Candle for $15.99, just a heads up to anyone who wants to get their hands on that. Forbidden Desires, limited edition. Will she go for the Forbidden Desires? Limited edition brand, well, I don't know I'll say brand new, but it is new to the, uh, the lineup for Village Candle. Or French Macaroon. You let me know in the comments and uh, let me pack it up and ship it to you. Everyone's like saying, no, she's here. She's here. Thanks, Leslie. <laughs> she's like, I'm here. No, I'm really here. Uh, so you let me know uh, at your convenience, Morgan. I will see your comment. And uh, just send me an email, Morgan, at candleenthusiast at yahoo.com. And just say, hey, it's Morgan. I want a village candle. Send it to me. This way we can communicate and we can figure out oh, the best way for me to ship this candle to you. French macaroon is the one that she chose. Perfect choice, perfect choice. I don't know what I would choose in this situation. I really don't, uh, but this one is definitely, uh, a, in my opinion, for my taste, a great one to choose. French macaroon, that is all yours. Don't just thank me. Thank Village Candle uh, for sending these candles. And everybody who didn't win, don't worry. We're going to do this every Sunday. Uh, maybe even uh, some spontaneous uh, giveaways. I have way too many candles these days, and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm giving back and um, that, uh, you know, uh, it's fun. Giving really is better than receiving, isn't it? I don't know if that's true, but it's felt true to me. Um, so that is going to sum it up for us, uh, basically, uh, a few things, uh, you know, uh, you know, I always try to end these the videos with words of wisdom, um, but, you know, the, I don't want to say the well is dry for positivity for me, um, but I feel like just coming on and saying spewing positivity, it doesn't work. You know, look, I mean, there's a lot of really crazy stuff going on. And I don't mean, I don't need to get into it. I don't need to give specifics. And I don't need to say like, oh, this world, ain't it crazy? I don't mean like that. I mean, there's, it's thing we can, I think, safely say at this point that what is happening now will change the course of the rest of our lives all of us i don't only care if you're watching from atlantis uh this what is happening right now will change everything businesses the way we go about doing things uh the internet versus you know going out and buying stuff social interaction uh, i think that uh this is a, a profound moment and in time and instead of like i said spewing positivity i think it's really just um i would say uh reevaluate yourself and pr really think about priorities because i'll tell you this a lot of the things i thought were priorities before all of this began uh truly weren't the priorities isn't that kind of strange? The things that we do every single day and we're constantly obsessing about. 
things we're trying to sleep and it's stuck in our head and it's like a broken wheel and it's going around and around and around, all of those things. It turns out that some of those things aren't, they're not the priority. Um, um, you know, so I, 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 I really recommend that you sit down and, uh, you know, with a good beverage in your hand, take some time and think about truly what is the most important thing for you and the people closest to you from this point on. Adjust the path, adjust the route, adjust, adjust the angle, whatever you want, any analogy you want, uh, create it. But make sure that when this is all done and this is all over, that you're on your own personal perfect direction or the, at least as close as perfect as you can make it and expect that the you know things that come up the path are never predictable but by shaving away those things that consume our minds activity uh, that are not priorities put them aside because uh, there's other things that are more important that need to be addressed. And I think that's true for all of us. It doesn't, we could be talking many different examples here. So instead of me just saying, everything's gonna be okay, everything's gonna be all right, think about when this is over, how things will be different, how things will ch be changed, and how you're going to be in this new environment. And what about you? are you going to change or dial in on, focus in on, and how you can make your personal journey, your, your, your excursion uh, more successful, more positive, and uh, inspirational for the people around you. Because that's what this whole candle enthusiast thing is about. It's about finding the smallest things in the world, the smallest things, a candle. Do you understand? I'll go into a Yankee candle and someone will say behind the counter and say, it's the candle enthusiast. I'm like, I have like 4,000 4, people in the world know me, but I am recognized. And out of all things, I'm recognized for a candle. And I'm not ashamed of that. Why? Because it's the smallest things in the world that can bring us joy and happiness. I'm fighting back tears right now. The smallest things in the world can bring us such happiness and if it's not a candle it can be something else so it's about finding those things those little hidden easter eggs all around us every single day to pay attention to those things and to extract to find joy and happiness within them and not consider it oh it's just a piece of wax we can say that it is just a piece of wax but it can be a lot more right it can be a lot more. That's all I got. Thank you for joining. Um, if you want to support the candle enthusiast, more importantly, Aromatic Adventures, my future travel destination vlog videos coming up as soon as everything is, the coast is clear. When everything is clear, if you want to help support the mission, the candle enthusiast, uh, all of the links are going to be in the description below. We have PayPal. We have Patreon if you want to become a member. We have T-shirts, Santa Claus on a T-shirt uh, at uh, thecandleenthusiast.spreadshirt.com. Plenty of ways. And trust me, one dollar, one dollar is more than enough. I'm serious. One dollar. Um, uh, because... This is my life's mission. This is the direction, the path that I've chosen. When I tell people I want to make silly little videos for YouTube, they're like, YouTube? Like, you know, Shane, like, isn't that for like kids who are in their 20s? No. I've looked at the variables. I've calculated the other things in my life. I've lived other life things and I've gotten rid of them wine industry, the film industry, I don't really need them. But making people happy, giving people experiences, showing people what I find uh, exhilarating, uh, sharing my passion with complete strangers and friends. You've got become close friends. 
but sharing my videos is my life's passion, my journey, and in any way, if you are able to help support the channel uh, or all of the endeavors that encompass the candle enthusiast, it's deeply appreciated. Rianne, thank you so much for the donation. Not only is Rianne a huge supporter, but she's a huge supporter of my brother uh, as well uh, in his channel. I really appreciate it, Rianne. Uh, but I've spoke enough. I want everyone to go out and have a fantastic Sunday. And when I say out, go out, you know, social distancing, you know, whatever it is. But get out. Get some of that vitamin D. Have a good dinner. Put on a good movie. There's still tons of good movies out to watch. Right? We can't go to the theater, but there's tons of things on Netflix. And I'll be telling you, I'll tell you, that's what I'll be doing tonight. So as I take my last sip from the Candle Enthusiast mug, not this one, but one can be found at Spreadshirt.com, I'm going to sign out and say thank you for joining. Thank you for participating. And I'll be seeing you folks real soon. So be good. Will you? And uh, congratulations to Morgan for winning the candle. I'll see you guys really soon. And uh, take care of yourselves, okay? And huge shout out to Alex. Eight pound super chat. Buddy, thank you so much. Uh, future YouTube star, Alex. Look out for him. We'll see you guys soon.